Comic fans, Higgy Pop here. I'm down in Florida on a little vacation. And, um, you know, feeling a little out of place. You know, I'm not in the comic room, but I found comics. You know what I'm saying? Always find comics no matter where I'm at. And, uh, you know, I, I gotta say, I miss the comic room. This place is a little too uh, sterile, a little clean. A lot of sunlight, you know what I'm saying? A lot of brightness. Woo! All right. I went to a comic book store in the next town over, Boynton Beach. I am in Del Rey. All right? The houses here are amazing. I mean, I, I couldn't afford to live in the mailbox myself, but I found myself a little place behind a dumpster over here. Perfect. Perfect. Um... So, I went to Tate's Comics in Boynton Beach, and it was the only place I could find that was legit, all right? And uh, I picked up some stuff I needed and some stuff I need to read. First thing I picked up was World's Finest. He was, he was not the best comic book store in the world, but he got the job done. He gave me my fix, you know what I'm saying? I was like, hey, man. I was like, hey, man, you got any comics, bro? He's like, he's like, he's like, show me the money. I, like, I got money. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, this is uh, World's Finest, issue number 213. This is back in September of 72. All together now. Those were the days. And um, this is uh, by uh, art by Dick Dillon, the usual. And uh, this features my buddy... He teams up with the atom, all right? See how the atom travels? He shrinks down, and he travels through the uh, the phone lines, which I always got a kick out of. You know, you're on the phone. You're like, yeah, Adam, what's happening? Hold it, mackerel! He comes flying out of the phone and kicks you in the lips, you know? And Superman's like, I can't believe this guy's doing this. So they get into a little adventure. They are, you know, uh, he needs the help of the atom. They got to go into the microverse there, and the atom has a belt that shrinks himself down. Right, it's the power. He's a scientist, you know what I'm saying? And he uses the power of a white dwarf star of some sort, and he made a belt that he could shrink down real tiny, small. And uh, so I didn't read it yet. I do not have my lists plural with me, so I don't think I have this one. But I was like, I may have this. I may got. I I may have it. But I'm like, if I don't get it. I'm going to be like, you're an idiot. You needed it. So I got it. I mean, everything was pretty much like three bucks. Got it. Boom. And another thing I collect is Marvel's Greatest Comics. This is issue number 41. All right. It's the usual. These are reprints of classics. You know, Jack Kirby and all that good stuff. And I need it. I do not think I have 41. The cover is not ringing a bell. Actually, I know I don't have this one. So, boom. Got it. And something we talked about in uh, briefly in previous issues. This is Prez. This is Prez. This is the first teen president. It's a little uh, story uh, by, uh, this is by Joe Simon and uh, Jerry Grandinetti. All right. And they came up with this one. This one is the last issue of the run. This is a four issue series. This was introduced also, the Prez was introduced in the Supergirl run. All right, I think it was uh, the last issue of Supergirl, number 10. All right, and this is back in September of 73. 73. I was zero years old, negative one at the time. All right, and uh, this is has the origin of Prez. Rick, Prez Ricard is his name. Ricard. All right, and, you know, I think he has a little dealings with... Um, some politics, you know, they want him to be just a yes sir man, yeah no sir man, and he's like, I ain't gonna hear it. All right, I need that because I have issue number one and two. I need four. Now I need three. I need three. I got four. I need three. All right, and here's something you don't see every day: Marvel premiere, the man brute called Wood God. Wood God. 
All right, I got into collecting these Marvel premieres because of the Guardians of the Galaxy, you understand, you see? And I see this one every now and again, Wood God. I'm like, who is this guy with goat legs? I mean, I ain't into it. But this is August of 76. This is written, this guy was created by, and this issue was written by Bill Mantillo, all right? And Keith Giffen was on the art, and the inks was by, imagine this, the inks was by Klaus Jansen. All right, Daredevil fame, and the Wood God. From what I know is, Wood God grows up on a normal earth, you know, and uh, he is on a farm where he belongs from the waist down. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, nice legs, dude. And uh, he's like, bah, bah, bah. and uh, he is raised by his mummy on the farm, and. Uh, She's like, this guy, we got to keep the mirrors out of the house. I don't want this guy knowing he's different. But obviously he is different. He's an outcast. The people in the sit in the town, they treat him like Frankenstein. They're throwing bottles and stuff at him and we're chasing him out with rakes. But he is the wood god. He's a strong bastard. And, you know, I don't know. It's one of those stories you're like, Whew. Anyways, I got it. I'm happy to have it. These are all in pretty dang good shape too. You know? Uh, they, if the, the, the upper crust probably would say, I ain't gonna buy this. This has a little koozie macam over here and a little gizzy mabo over there. But I'm like, yeah, looking good. And, uh, Marvel Triple Action Issue Number Four. This is back in August of 72. The Peril and the Power. This is just a classic Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. All right. We got some... I love I love the triple action comics, the early ones, because they have the bubbles that are different. Like, you know, this is, is very rare with the color, you know, with the Doctor Doom and all that. I have issue number one at home, and that's what drew my eye to it. I was like, pretty cool. So, this got the word bubbles. All right, let me see if I can get this dialogue down. Doctor Doom is, you missed thing, and so you die. And then read and. Um, and this is a fan, the invisible woman's like read we're too late too late and that's what we got we got a uh, we got uh, the human torch throwing a fastball and the thing swinging a miss we got the silver surfer chilling in the back over there all right one thing I saw in Florida that's blowing my mind they got these automatic surfboards these guys are just cruising guy smoking a cigarette on a surfboard it's just going he's just there's no waves he's just like wild and my fave plastic man plastic man all right very underrated character very underrated he is a member of the justice league uh, for a long time you know uh grant morrison brought him back to life in the justice league and uh they kind of made him a jokester a little too much crazy like that but this is the uh dc run original Back in September of 76. And the artists were uh, Ramona, Fraden, and Mike Royer on this. All right. And um, I just love these early Plastic Mans that DC started. And the cover is fantastic. Check it out. A little stainage right here. So my professional grading would be. Uh, mez mez. I give it a mez mez plus. All right. Not bad, right? Not bad, not bad. I have a couple of these I I would like. I'm not sure how many are in this run, but uh, I like them. I like them. This guy looks like, uh, who's the Batman villain? The mud dude. I can't remember. Clayface. But it ain't. We got a little dialogue. Let's see what the DC dialogue is. Man has plaz got trouble now. It moves, it lives, it eats. Can't Plastic Man defeat the Lurker below? Alright. That's an Ernie Chan cover. Imagine that, dude. No wonder it's so good. Ernie Chan from Conan fame. Alright. Him and a little Shalbashuma. Alright, what else did I get? Aha, hold on. Almost forgot this. Luke Cage Power Man, issue number 36. All right, I couldn't let it stay there because it's three dollars. It says, Chemistro is back. 
And Luke Cage is like, I didn't like chemistry in high school. Get out my way. Swing. Boom. Luke Cage. Power Man is badass. Even with the tiara on his head. You know, it's like... Comestro's like, uh, where's your chemistry homework, dude? I want it. You've turned the ground into quicksand. And here's where Comestro makes sure you drown in it. Great dialogue. I mean, you can't beat that. You don't have trouble following that one. All right. Let's open it up because that's what we do. We get our comics and we open them up and we read them. Opening page. Boom. Luke Cage with Spider-Man. All right. Steve Englehart is on the words. George Tuska and Billy Graham are on the pictures. Charlotte Jetter and Petra Goldberg are on the lettering. And Roy Thomas is the editor. One of my faves, Roy. Conan fame. And we're looking good, man. Right? Opening scene, like I said. And Luke Cage, I love it. For a belt. What do you want for a belt? Give me the biggest gauge chain you have. All right. I had trouble keeping my pants up before, but now with this chain... <laughs> Do you have chain suspenders? That would be fantastic. All right, looking good. All right. One thing about Marvel, you don't need to read. That's the way they built it. You just go zing, 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 and you can follow the story without even learning how to read. Good art. I like the art. This Comestro guy, he's a shady bugger. Look at this. Comestro. Look, they show him trying to lift weights. Look at him, he's like, ar, 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 ar. <laughs> He looks like Deadshot. Look at this. See that? Deadshot from DC Comics. That's what I'm getting. Deadshot is a great underrated character, all right? There's a couple runs just featuring Deadshot. There's a four-part miniseries from the 90s, which was great. And there's another series in the 2000s, which was great and then he just stuck with the suicide squad and they ruined them from there on out and but the secret six is a great what uh what, what's her face there she wrote that series and it was a great series great Catman, dead shot uh vandal savage's daughter and ba -ba 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 and bane fantastic all right yeah, it looks like Deadshot. Looks like Deadshot to me. Anyways, he's Camistro. Camistro. All right. And he's giving Luke Cage a hard time. Slap. I oh, guess. It's a classic. Slap. And. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. I'm glad I got it. And, uh-oh. Oh, my foot. Come at, ooh, ew, ew. Ooh, he shot himself in the foot, Camistro. And his foot disintegrated. Whoa. Gotta read it. Gotta read it. All right, it keeps me riveted. And around here in this Florida, it's sunny and bright. So, I am... On vacation, and I read two trades already. One was um, this right here. The thing, Idols of Millions. It's it's fun. It's a fun read. And I just get a kick out of the thing. He's very funny. Good stuff. And I read, what was the other one? A Fantastic Four. Come to find out, I'm halfway through it. I'm like, I already read this. What the hell? I'm like, bingo. Now at Tate's Comics in Boynton Beach. He had boxes and boxes of trades, half price. And I'm like, I'm all over that. Like white on rice. Because that's what I like. I like getting trades and reading the heck out of them. And I got, I got this. I got this. Heroes for Hire, Thunderbolts, Civil War. All right, I'm a big fan of Thunderbolts, and I don't think I ever read anything about this. 
Let me see. Yeah, the Civil War storyline was pretty good, I thought. And this looks like a winner. I mean, great art. Greg Palmati. I think, what's his name? Anyways, Palmiati and Gray, those that they team up all the time. And they did like the Freedom Fighters in DC, the, the uh, latest runs and stuff like that. That's what I know him from. All right. And he's, Palmati's and, uh, and Gray are doing something right now with DC as we speak. I can't remember what it is. And I have been on a huge Thanos kick lately. Thanos. And um, I just read uh, all, I mean, I'm, I'm not too savvy with the Marvel, uh, where things stand and what order and all that stuff. I really ain't. I'm just a DC guy. Now, everyone and their mother wants DC because of the new storylines coming out with this uh, director. And uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm already there. I am up to here with DC. I got it all, baby. Who's standing tall now? You know, I mean, I'm in. And um, so they're all like, yeah, uh, everyone's like, oh, Booster Gold. Now everyone wants Booster Gold because you got some series coming out. I already got them all ever since the beginning, baby. Me. Here we go. This is Thanos Infinity Abyss by Jim Starlin, the one and only. And this looks like a hoot. I can't wait. To crack this baby. This is the next one I'm going to read. This is the next one. Jim Starlin is awesome. All that space stuff, Starlin is there. I am there too. It is writer and pencil, Jim Starlin. I, I very much appreciate his art. Because it looks like he puts a lot of time into it. Nothing's rushed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. Ooh, ooh, yeah. Ooh, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. You can see a little Spider-Man action. A little Hulk action. A little maybe Warlock. Ba-ba-boom. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is going to be great. This is going to be great. Yes. I know what I'm doing. Read it. Because it makes me smile. See you later.